Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with the second episode of the Pokemon Heart Gold Random Card Challenge. If you didn't see the first episode, you can check that out, it'll be linked in the description. We've already earned our first two gym badges, but to make it to Goldenrod City to go after the plane badge, we have to take down our rival in Azalea Town. First though, we've got to draw a team of three to face off against him. For our second battle with Silver, we're going to be using the team of Seal, Caterpie, and Barboach. That's not the best team, but I'd rather get a full group of first stage Pokemon now rather than later. Once we reach Jasmine, we're going to be facing off against fully evolved teams for the rest of the game, so getting rid of first stage Pokemon now is probably for the best. Okay, let's have a look at the team. Frost the Seal is at level 14 with the moves Headbutt, Water Sport, Growl, and Icy Wind. Vito the Caterpie is at level 16 with Tackle, String Shot, and Bug Bite. Lastly, we've got Zigzag the Barboach, and his moveset features Water Gun, Water Sport, Amnesia, and Mud Bomb. The only shared weakness that our team has is Seal and Barboach's vulnerability to Grass-type moves, but Caterpie can cover that with Bug Bite, so overall this team's solid enough type-wise. Okay, let's get into it. Silver leads off with Pidgey, and we send in Seal first. Our rival just tells the Tiny Bird to spam Sand Attack, which makes it incredibly difficult for Frost to connect with Icy Wind. After three consecutive misses, Seal gets hit by a quick attack, but it doesn't deal much damage. When Frost finally makes contact with Icy Wind, it takes Pidgey below half health. While Silver continues to call for Sand Attack, Frost finally succeeds in catching Pidgey in a second blast of Icy Wind. It took eight attempts for Seal to hit just twice, but Pidgey never really took advantage of our inaccuracy. Silver calls for Chikorita next, so there's the Grass-type weakness I was afraid of. We recall Frost and send in Caterpie, hoping the type advantage is enough to get us through. The Johto Grass starter begins by poisoning Vito, but a powerful Bug Bite cuts away more than half of Chikorita's health. A Growl does stop Vito from wiping him out in two, but with Chikorita in red health, Silver really slows our progress by calling for Synthesis. From there, our rival is just set on stalling us out. We go back and forth with Bug Bite and Synthesis, but with Chikorita out of PP for the healing move and stuck in red health, he lands a Razor Leaf to finish off Vito. Still, it was an excellent performance from Caterpie, and Seal only needs one chance to finish off his hard work. For some reason, Silver called for Growl instead of Razor Leaf against Frost, meaning we're in a pretty comfortable 2 on 1. Our rival's last team member is Skip Loom, which means our only shared weakness has shown up twice out of three opponents. The Cottonweed Pokemon is quad weak to Ice, though, giving his whole team a pretty nasty frailty versus Frost. Still, we're always keen to use our whole team, so we send in Zigzag to finish off the trio. The Water Ground type is immediately paralyzed by Stun Spore before we deal a tiny bit of damage with a Water Gun. Then, with our whole team having appeared, we recall Barboach in favor of Seal, who dodges the paralysis to land an Icy Wind. It does surprisingly little for a quad effective move, but one more shot will finish the battle. That makes the Sleep Powder that follows slightly more annoying, but it doesn't do much for long. Frost wakes up and fires an Icy Wind in Skip Bloom's direction, knocking him out and handing us the win. That went surprisingly well in the end. We're now free to make our way through Ilex Forest towards Goldenrod City to face off against Johto's third gym leader, Whitney. The Goldenrod Gym Leader has two Pokemon in her team, so we've got to draw our own duo for the battle. It looks like we'll be using Rhydon and Coughing for the third Johto Gym battle, which feels a little dangerous. We've got one fully evolved Pokemon, but with a couple of quad weaknesses to the first and third most common typings, there's every chance we're going to be reliant on Coughing in this one. Okay, let's get into the game and have a look at the team. Starting with Tang the Coughing, at level 19, the Poison type has the moves Assurance, Smokescreen, Self-Destruct, and Smog. With Levitate in play, we do at least have a nice ground-type resistance. Next up, we've got Raya the Rhydon. At level 17, she's got the moves Horn Attack, Tail Whip, Stomp, and Rock Tomb. It's not the best moveset. As the game goes on, we'll hopefully acquire some good TMs and HMs to power up our movesets, but for now, we're stuck with these. Right, let's go after Gym Badge number 3. Whitney leads off with her Swab Blue, and we start out with Coughing. That's another unlucky start, because we really have to switch out immediately. Fortunately for us, the baby dragon misses her fury attack when Raya comes in, but that lucky streak comes to a halt pretty quickly. Swablu follows up with Growl and Rhydon misses Rock Tomb, which leads Whitney to switch out for Swampert. There's the water type I was worried about. After connecting with a Rock Tomb that was aimed at Swablu, we get out of there immediately to avoid Raya's early demise. Unsurprisingly, Tang is soaked by a water gun on switch in, and as a critical hit, it chips away almost half of her HP. We need to get to work and set up for the worst case scenario. If Tang goes down, we need to give Raya a chance against Whitney Swampert, so Smokescreen is going to be key. When Whitney calls for Bide, it's an absolute gift. We get up three free Smokescreens and then she calls for Bide again. 
Sadly, I figured she'd be attacking, so I went for assurance, meaning Bide is actually storing some real energy this time. It's not much, though. After the fourth smokescreen, Swampert unleashes Bide, which takes Tang down to 11 HP. We land one more smokescreen before going with what was always going to be our ultimate tactic. With Coughing's HP low, she uses self-destruct, blowing away Swampert and making that whole sequence of accuracy lowering moves entirely pointless. Still, I needed to play it safe. With both Pokemon going down at the same time, we're left with a one-on-one. -on -one. Rhydon vs Swablu. I'm feeling pretty good about this one. It only takes a single rock team to finish the job and earn us the win over Whitney. With the plane badge now in our case, we can make our way past the path-blocking Sudowoodo and enter Ecritique City. Once we get there, we need to head to the Burn Tower where our next rival battle awaits. Silver's upped his team to 4 for the face-off in Ecritique, so we need to draw our own quartet for this one. This will be the last rival battle where our opponent's entire team isn't fully evolved, so we probably don't need the best team. It looks like we'll be using Voltorb, Diglett, Butterfree, and Clefable. That's a pretty well-balanced team. Diglett and Butterfree have the only shared weakness in the group, and it's to the least common typing, so we're well set up. Okay, let's go over the team. At level 20, we've got Donut the Voltorb, with the moves Spark, Screech, Sonic Boom, and Rollout. Ruby the Butterfree is at level 18, with Gust, Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, and Confusion. Our highest leveled Pokemon at 22 is Faris the Clefable, and her moveset features Blizzard, Sing, Hyper Beam, and Thunder. The Goldenrod City Department Store has given us a few powerful TM choices, and with Clefable's pretty limited learn set in Gen 4, we really went all out with them. Finally, at level 20, we've got hashtag smileyface equals Quaver the Third. Just in case it was unclear, I was really struggling for nicknames at this point. Diglett has the moves Astonish, Mudslap, Magnitude, and Dig, and as the third of her name, I'm sure that moveset will help do her family proud. Alright, let's give this battle a try. Silver sends in Donphan first, and we lead off with Voltorb, so... Another great starting choice on my part. Luckily, we have an obvious switch in. With the Ground-type move almost certainly coming next, we can bring in Butterfree to avoid the attack. After dodging Magnitude, Ruby uses Sleep Powder to put Donphan to sleep, but her strength isn't in attacking. A couple of blasts of confusion can only knock off around a third of Donphan's HP, so we switch out again, this time bringing in Clefable. Faris has to take a hit of Rollout from the Waking Ground type before hitting back with Blizzard, which wipes Silver's first Pokemon out, leaving him with three. Our rival sends in Jinx, who outspeeds Clefable to put her to sleep with Lovely Kiss. With the Ice type weakness that Diglett and Butterfree have in common, there's not a great switch in here, so we just leave Faris in to take the hits. The freezing cold gust of powder snow wakes Clefable up, but she fires a hyper beam wide of the mark, and the second lovely kiss puts her right back to sleep. This time it takes a lot more to wake Clefable up, but when she eventually comes to, the hyper beam connects, leaving Jinx with only a few hit points remaining. Needing a turn to recharge, Clefable can't defend herself one last time and is knocked out by Double Slap. We switch into our fastest team member, and Voltorb's immense speed is too much for Jinx. A sonic beam cuts down the ice and psychic type before she can do anything to stop it. Milotic is out next for Silver, which is pretty ideal for Donut. A series of sparks cut down the water type before he can do any real damage. When Cherubi comes in, our job is as good as done. We switch out to Diglett to make use of our whole team, but she's really not up to much against the grass type. Leech Seed and Magical Leaf combine to take down hashtag smileyface equals Quaver the third, making it a two on one. Butterfree comes back in, and even with the level disadvantage, she's got too much for Cherubi. A couple of gusts of wind blow away Silver's final Pokemon, handing us another win over our rival. With a team featuring Milotic, Jinx, and Donphan, we did really well to win this as easily as we did. To finish this episode off, we're going after our fourth gym badge against Morty in the Ecritique City Gym. Considering Pokemon Heart Gold has two regions to traverse, I figured it made more sense to do a bit extra in each episode. The Mystic Seer of the Future has a team of four, so let's draw a new team. We're going to be using Ekans, Lickitung, Primeape, and Nidorino for this one, which could make things incredibly tough. With two pure poison types, we're going to have serious problems if Morty has a ground type, and with Primeape in the mix, a psychic type is going to be a massive issue. There's also not a wide array of attacking options, with only poison, fighting, and normal for stab moves. Alright, let's have a look at the team and their movesets. Scaramanga the Lickitung is up first, and at level 21, the normal type has Blizzard, Supersonic, Stomp, and Knockoff. There's a bit of cover for ground and psychic types, just in case we need it. Imanxin the Ekans is up next. Also at 21, the poison type has Acid, Screech, Glare, and Bite, which gives us another potential counter for psychic types, although I'm not sure Ekans could last long against one. 
A couple of levels higher at 23 is Animo the Primeape, and he's got Low Kick, Screech, Seismic Toss, and Karate Chop. Finally, we've got Ringo the Nidorino, who's at level 25 with Horn Attack, Double Kick, Poison Sting, and Fury Attack. With Rivalry for his ability, he should be good for some extra damage against Morty's whole team that's usually 100% male. I don't know if the randomizer changes genders, but I guess we'll find out. Let's give this a go. We send out Lickitung first, and Morty leads off with Finneon. We start off with Supersonic, while the Wingfish Pokemon does a little dance to summon the rain. Then we go back and forth with Stomp and Water Gun, and Scaramanga is easily more powerful. Morty uses a Hyper Potion to get Finneon back into it, but Lickitung is clearly too much for the water type. When Scaramanga knocked Morty's first Pokemon into red health for the second time, I called for Supersonic for some reason. That means Lickitung has to take an extra Water Gun, but eventually he gets the better of Finneon with Stomp and gives us an early lead. Next up for Morty is Groudon. So, I was hoping for no ground types, and instead Morty decided to catch the most powerful ground type in the game. Nice. Before Scaramanga can even get a hit in, Groudon destroys him with Lava Plume to tie up the match. We send out Animo, and luckily we kept Low Kick in his moveset because it's our only chance against the Pokemon Ruby mascot. With Groudon weighing well over the 200 kilo upper limit, the fighting type attack will be good for 120 base power on every hit. Even then, it can only cut away a bit less than a third of Groudon's HP. When it uses Scary Face in response, it's a free chance for us to switch out. Primate speed being harshly lowered is the last thing we need. Outspeeding Groudon is just about the only thing we have right now, so we recall Animo and send in Nidorino. A crit hammer arm deals a ton of damage to Ringo, and he misses Fury Attack, allowing Groudon to get off a Mud Bomb to finish the job. When Primate comes back in, he gets a vital critical hit that leaves Groudon with only a handful of hit points remaining. A Citrus Berry recovers some of the Continent Pokemon's HP before a Hammer Arm takes Animo below half health. A final Low Kick knocks off Groudon, leaving us weak but still with a chance to pick up the Fog Badge. I must say, I'm incredibly happy that Morty decided to use that first Hyper Potion on Finneon. Morty's third team member is Weezing, which isn't great but maybe Ekans can deal with him. She dodges Weezing's Smog on Switch In and then paralyzes him with Glare before getting to work with Screech. I can't really picture a snake screeching, that just seems unnatural and horrifying, but I don't make the rules. Imanxin bottoms out Weezing's defense after taking one hit and a smoke screen, leaving the poison gas Pokemon vulnerable. Two bites knock out Weezing, and just like that, Morty only has one Pokemon remaining. The Ecratique Gym Leader sends out his final Pokemon, Smeargle. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this one now. After getting her bite sketched, Ekans paralyzes Smeargle with Glare, leaving us in complete control. We switch out to Primeape, who obliterates the normal type with Karate Chop, earning us our fourth gym badge. When Groudon came in, I really thought we had no chance, but Animo overcame the legendary Pokemon to give us a seriously unlikely win. With another two badges added to our case, that'll do it for this episode. We're already halfway through the Johto region's gym leaders, and we're only two episodes into the series. This is going surprisingly well so far. In the next episode, we're going to go on the hunt for a few more gym badges, but until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.